Hi, it's Andy again, and today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to make your emulator run a little bit faster. So, um, I've been getting a lot of feedback on how quick my emulators seem to work uh, for Android, and uh, if you don't have these optimizations, you're probably running on an, em em um, an emulator much like the one on the right. So this one's running on the ARM-based firmware or system image, so it's not optimized for Intel. So it gets all choppy and it looks a lot like this, probably on your computer. Um, over here, this is an Intel image, and you can see it's a lot smoother. All the transitions run a lot faster. If I run that over here, it it basically waits till the next page is already loaded up there's no real transition for anything um, and that can be very frustrating when you're trying to develop an app uh, especially something with any kind of graphics so I'm going to show you how to avoid this and get something more like this so first thing we want to do is uh, I'll show you what I'm running on this computer since I get that a lot see if it's anything special um, I am running a Core i7 quad core processor it is a first generation Core i7 uh, I have not overclocked it or anything I am running at the at the baseline 2.8 gigahertz um, this processor does offer I think all core processor um, Intel core processors offer some kind of overclocking managed by um, system so I think this one maxes out at 3.2 but it's going to only show uh, 2.8 on any kind of um, uh, software to determine what your clock speed is. Uh, the graphics uh, before today I didn't have the graphics card that I have in here active so everything you've seen in my uh, previous videos are running off of the Intel graphics uh, when I got prepared to shoot this video, I actually noticed that this said unknown. So uh, it looks like when I upgraded to Intel 12, um, to Ubuntu 12.10, I actually um, didn't install, it took out my, my graphics driver. So I've been running since October without a graphics driver. So I fixed that and it should be running a lot uh, faster now. What I've noticed is that um, my CPU is definitely liking it a lot better. I don't hear the fan on quite as much as I did before. Uh, one, one gig disk space uh, with a 7200 RPM drive. So there's nothing... Oh, so this graphics card is actually an ATI uh, graphics card. Uh, or, yeah, ATI graphics card. It's a 5400 something. Like 54 series, 100 series. I don't actually know what the the last two digits are but uh, it, I think it has like two gigs of RAM on it as well <clears throat> so let oh so yeah I have eight gigs of RAM installed uh, looks like Ubuntu is shows it formatted to 7.8 okay so now that my uh, hardware is established you can definitely achieve the same effect on something a lot slower um, I have a uh, Intel Core i7 third generation laptop. Now the laptop, is, I don't particularly think it's anywhere near as good as this desktop first generation, but it's not bad either. It does run a uh, NVIDIA graphics card, but it uses the integrated uh, RAM. It has 8 gigs of RAM, but the video card is using about 2 gigs of that at any given time. So. Um, I can achieve this in Windows as well on my laptop. Um, so it's not really, you don't need rocket science, like I mean cutting edge hardware to to achieve this effect. So you want to make sure if you open up the SDK, go into the tools folder, run this Android script, or if you're running in Windows there should be an SDK manager.exe file that you can run. You want to make sure you download this Intel uh, Atom system image. You want to run that whether you're running Ubuntu or any kind of Linux versus Windows, Mac, doesn't matter. This uh, x86 system image is going to help you achieve much better performance alone on, uh, um, on your 
uh, emulator. Now, if you're running Windows, oh, if you're running Win, uh, Linux, you're done. That's all you really need. However, if you're running Windows, you're going to also want to get this Intel X86 Emulator Accelerator, otherwise known as Haxum. Um, it's not compatible with Linux, but as you can see, it doesn't really make that much a difference because it runs blazingly fast in Linux. However, you're going to need this package if you're running Windows. Now, what you want to do is download this package. So you're going to click this little box and say install packages. Now, that's a little misleading because it's not actually installing anything. You're just downloading that, f that file. Um, so that file is going to download in onto your computer. It's a pretty big file. Uh, don't remember exactly quite how big it is. Um, but I will let you know exactly where it saves that to in just a second. I'm going to pull up my laptop and find out where it is. Okay, so I found it on my a laptop that I have in front of me, and it actually, I said it was a large file, it actually isn't. It just seems like it is because it takes a little bit to download from, uh, I'm guessing it's downloading from Intel servers and not Google. But uh, it's about, I think, two, two megabytes about, um, and it's going to be saved into your uh, SDK so I'll show you the equivalent to it. So you have your SDK. It's going to be in a folder called Extras. And um, there'll be a folder called Intel. So I'll, I'll show you exactly kind of. So you're going to have an Intel folder. Once you go into there, you'll have a folder called Hardware Accelerated execution manager so in there you're gonna find your .exe file for this program um, it made by Intel to make it run a lot faster on your Windows computer uh, it'll be called Haxum H A X M dash Windows underscore uh, R02 for I'm guessing their version number so that's where it's going to be. You're going to want to install that if you're running a Windows computer because that's going to give you the best outcomes. Now also if you're running Windows, how you set up your emulator, which is what I'm going to show you next, is going to be also key. Um, for phones, you're, you can go up to a gig, I believe, in RAM that you're going to, you can allocate to it without an issue. Uh, however, if you set up a large tablet, you're going to be limited to, I think, 700 and... 56 I don't about 700 megabytes of RAM so just deal with it go with 512 uh, and if you need something that's going to take up a lot more RAM than that if you're developing a game or something like that you're probably not watching my tutorials but uh, you can you would just use a regular device to test out your program I, I the emulator is fast enough for you to actually do real gaming finally uh, but it's it's going to be limited on how much RAM do you really need. And uh, if you're developing a game that needs more than 512 uh, megabytes of RAM, you're probably not going to be at targeting a, a huge um, base of uh, you know customers. But I mean, obviously, you have these gaming tablets like the Nexus 7 with the Tegra processor. So and I think the those usually have at least one gig of RAM, if not more. So uh, if you hover around 512 and you can manage to get by on 512, then do it. That that that's how you're going to avoid issues with getting this uh, Haxum or the hardware accelerated uh, emulator manager thing to work on um, execution manager to work on on Windows. So now let's set up a, a virtual device. So we're going to start a new one. You can name it whatever you want, no spaces. So we'll, we'll do hardware accelerated Intel. We'll just name it that. So you can pick your own device here, or you can create a custom one. Uh, you would create a custom one in this device definitions one. If you wanted specific parameters for your device, Maybe create something 
that is more like something available on the market. Like I, I have one on my laptop that mimics the Note 2, which has a hardware buttons. No, so it gets rid of the the buttons on the bottom, and it also uh, I have the aspect ratio accurate and everything like that. Um, the only thing I don't have is I, I make sure I, I use the latest when I'm compiling. So I only pretty much develop, test my apps in 4.2.2. But I do have a gingerbread emulator just in case. So, <clears throat> so you can create your own device or use one of their predefined ones. So if you're developing for a tablet, you can use this 10.1 inch uh, WXGA tablet. So that's automatically going to be defaulted to 512. And that's to prevent um, this, uh, the programs from crashing, like the emulators from not loading. Uh, I think in Linux you can probably get away with more. So uh, I'm going to, I'll try it. See if I, I can, I haven't actually tested it in Linux doing it this way. Um, so the system image for 4.0.3, I don't have the Intel version of it. So I'm going to select this 4.2.2 and I'm going to select Intel here in the CPU ABI. And also you're going to want to select this, use host GPU. Now I don't have all of mine running on this or I didn't before, I, uh, but this gives a little bit extra uh, performance if you're going to be going this route. So you want to make sure you select this uh, to achieve the maximum performance you can get. Now I, th I, I think this is placed in a different location depending on whether you're running Windows or Linux. So you definitely want to take a uh, look out for this use host GPU. Okay so we're going to create our image and uh, we're going to run it. So start it up. Uh, you don't want to select any of these if you want it to fit on your screen. Uh, or if you want to, this 1280 by 800 is going to fit on your screen. But if you wanted to um, maybe make a Nexus 10 tablet, that's not going to fit in the resolution of a, of a normal 1080p monitor because it actually has a higher resolution than a, a 1080p monitor. So you would want to scale this down if you're going to do something like a Nexus 10. Um, you can wipe user data if you're going to want to set start fresh. Um, you're running out of space or you've, you're going to... We don't need it because we're running this first, uh, as a first time. There's no, no user data on it. But if you did want to wipe it, it gives you an option. It's going to take a lot longer to boot the first time uh, when you select this. So just giving you a heads up and boom and also when you have all the hardware accelerated options these boot ridiculously fast um, I don't really know of any uh, computer or current devices on the market that can boot that fast so this is from blank to boot it up in literally a couple of seconds alright and so now we have our little hardware accelerated program or emulator. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions on any more settings that I have, uh, please let me know and I'll be glad to